Hi, Bowen. Good evening to you. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know how many of you know me. My name is there. My affiliation with IEC is also there. So that is where I come from. And uh, welcome to this uh, new series of lectures uh, under the <clears throat> official review preparatory stage. Uh, try to prepare you to face not only the B paper, also I will be touching upon certain general aspects of engineering uh, as a professional. Right? So, uh, let me ask few questions. I like you to interact with me as much as you like. Uh, I don't get angry. You can disagree with me, still I won't get angry. Uh, so, uh, you can always uh, challenge me, that's encouraged. And uh, if you don't agree with me, please feel free to say why you don't agree with me. Right? So, it should be a very friendly atmosphere and uh, no master to relationship. You all are very mature people, try to become uh, professionals in our own career. So, therefore, I treat you as a similar person. So, there's no barrier between both of us. Uh, uh, then we'll be commencing this. Uh, why I waited for ten minutes is I don't usually wait for ten minutes. I start on almost try to start on the time, and uh, you will now soon. I gave some instructions. You see what happened to the people who come a little late. I am not punishing them. Uh, they'll have a uh, the advantage of uh, sitting in the front seats and listening to me very attentively. So that will be the uh, norm uh, if you come late. Right? I also get late for various reasons, uh, but I, I still have to pay the price for being late. So, uh, I would like to ask a few questions from you. How many of you are from the public sector? When I say public sector, corporate sector, department, and so on and so forth. Please put your hands up. Hi! Hi! Come on! You can raise it high. Hi, 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 okay, good, from the pure private sector, not the NGOs, not the forces, right, private sector, good, just a random sample, there is a public sector which, which organizes you come from, you can shout, can talk. I like engineers to talk. So, Katwal Gidruti Lavinani, Eginda Katakarana. Right? When it's a public sector, what are the organizations? No organization. Very strange. Sri Lanka has public sector that doesn't have a name. Very strange. I will note you, and uh, I am the moderate for this entire process. So, I will penalize you if you don't talk. So, which public sector you belong to? I am getting strict now. Still, you have not. You can't talk. Simply, you can't talk. If you behave like this, I can get into more punitive measures. Right? I can be very, very uh, strict. So, as much as I. I am very friendly, I can also be very strict. The last time I am asking you and give me a, your answers, right? From which public sector are you? Come on, come on. Get up, get up. All those who say public sector, get up. Please, please, get up. Stand up, stand up, stand up. You should be ashamed of yourself. I am telling you frankly, at the first instance, you should be absolutely damn shame about yourself. You can't even talk. If you can't talk, how can you become child engineers? That's the first lesson I'm giving you. It shows very well when you see the results. Who can't express themselves will not pass the exam. I can assure you. I'm sorry to talk to you on the first day. Like this. Now at least tell me which organization you belong to. Still you can't talk. 
CV, which the, where, where are you from? Energy market. Huh? Energy market. Energy market, which, which uh, branch? Huh? Transmission. Transmission, okay. Huh? CCV. What about? Huh? No, they are now not at all. SCC. Huh? Land reclamation. Okay, sit down. Yeah, you lady? You get it, man. Private sector. Where are you from? Huh? Sunken. Maga. If you can talk like this, why the hell didn't you talk? I'm ashamed of you all. To tell you very frankly, I'm a person who tells things to the face. I won't go and criticize you outside this room. I criticize you right here to your face. Right? First of all, you must be ashamed when someone asks you a question. If you can't answer properly, how can we pass you? I really, really. I have been doing this for the last four or five years, right? I feel really sorry for the engineers, right? When you, I think you got a message at the door, right? Someone told you something at the door? No? Call Sanjeev? Is there a person called Sanjeev? Call him. Right? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Call Sanjeev and come. All of you. This is the other problem I'm having. Uh, I, I should have told this to you all and done it myself. I'm sorry. All your... We're going to give that the Friday? Yeah. Friday is 5.15. So tell everybody what they have to do. Five. You take them out and tell, tell them exactly what they have to do. Okay? Right. All of you have to come to the front seats. This is the punishment you are getting for getting late. It's not a bad punishment. Right? Okay. Fine. I am sorry I had to start off with a very bad note today. I got off very, got up uh, from the bed very, very, very happily. That time we didn't move again. I can't even tell you how I got up. I Right? Okay. Uh, so, I like you all to show up that you all are fit to be engineers. Which means you have to rise up to the occasion. So, that's the first thing that I would like to tell you. So, when I ask you a question, you must answer loudly for me to hear. You are a lot of people who don't have uh, loud voices. You have loud voices. So, use it. Right? If that is the case, I start off by saying this is a friendly atmosphere. So I would like to have a dialogue and uh, uh, interaction with you all. So please help me to uh, conduct this lecture in that fashion. Okay, right. Now the first question I am to ask you is the definition of an engineer. Right? If you find it difficult to read, you can go that side, right? Okay. An engineer, this is from the Wikipedia, not my words. I think I have added only one word, right? An engineer is a professional practitioner of engineering, is obvious. Concerned with applying, see, keep the words in mind, what is it, uh, online in red. Scientific knowledge, mathematics, and ingenuity. In, to develop solutions, for technical problems. Engineer design materials, structures, machines and systems. While considering the limitations imposed by practicality, safety and cost. The word that I would like to add is environment. Right? Limitations imposed by Practically, safety, environment and cost. So these are the bounds within which you have to work. Right? The word engineer is right from the Latin root, ingenium, which means 
front means not the third row front means front you can go that to that side right cleverness so you guys are going to do a small exercise right pat your own backs come on pat your own backs ek baat kar gane bari pat your own backs hey as a you are bloody good engineers you are clever you guys are clever but i don't see that cleverness sorry when i say something you are like my god are a mini bit you know because of the katha gane so right you are like clever people that's why you are like engineers you have come through the hard way you have studied well you have gone through an engineering course so all you are like engineers so that means you are like clever to begin with you are like clever i don't say this the wikipedia says this engineers are grounded in applied sciences and their work in research and development is distinct from the basic research focus of scientists the work of engineers forms the link between scientific discoveries and the aspirations that meet the needs of the society so what are the red red underlined words that you saw ah huh? meet the needs of society and the other one the first page scientific knowledge right so two cornerstones scientific knowledge and meet the needs of society that's what you we prepare engineers for so in a pictorial form therefore the central focus of engineering is the bottom uh, like the italy you know with the bottom italy the middle italy central focus of engineering profession is the application of scientific knowledge to meet the societal needs those who have only the scientific knowledge they call scientists and for him this particular device will be weighing maybe uh, 98.386985 grams that's for the who for scientist but for the engineer what is the weight engineer what is the weight 100 grams come on you are like clever right so that is the difference between scientists and the engineers but without science this is maybe uh, 200 grams 350 grams how you know this 100 grams is because there are some measurement of weight and that is engineering right we based on fundamental science on the other hand engineers may pursue creative efforts without involving analytical skills and one may apply analytical skills without entering the domain of creativity so that's within our personal behavior some of us are very creative some of us are trained to do a lot of analytical work right among the engineers we have these both categories we are very creative at the same time we have also group of engineers who have tremendous skill for analysis right their whole mind is trained to do analytical work so this also interact with this our characteristics so therefore as engineers we possess both these qualities right right for example i'll let me explain engineers apply commercial software to solutions of an engineering problem the application of analytical skills per se may involve little or no creative at all supposing you are you are using i am not a structural engineer you know structural engineers use quite a lot of uh, software tools right when they use that kind of tools maybe very little analytical work is required you put in lot of data get lot of uh, uh, results then you apply the results to maybe design a beam or another structure so very little creativity is used on the other hand an engineer may design an ergonomic office you know what ergonomics is what is ergonomics anybody who knows what the meaning of ergonomics 
Anyone who knows the name of the word of word ergonomics? You young lady, you young, young gentleman, you got a message at the gate, right? So you had to obey the command at the door. No, 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 no. You were told where to sit, both of you. Up, 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 up. Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. You were told where to sit, right? Come right in front. We like to see your nice face. Yes. Right. So if you are using economically, uh, economic office space, analysis may be, may play a very small role, but creativity takes over. So who knows the word economics? Economics. No one knows? No one knows the wing of economics? Economics is the art of making a living space more comfortable. Is that correct? You, you, you knew that, right? So ergonomics, if you are designing an office with ergonomics, that means very lot of creativity is used and less analytical uh, depth. Hence, let us work, now look at engineering from all these perspectives. So the pie remains the same. The pie can be a fish pie or even Italy. Remains, uh, the, the intersection between the scientific knowledge and societal needs is this this Italy, this pie, okay? And now you find the engineers are having three segments, A, B and C. So engineers, they start off with scientific knowledge and societal needs. Now on top of that you have, just because of our nature, our own character, we are now three kinds of engineers, which are A, B and C. Let's now analyze A, B and C separately. Three aspects of engineering. Sector A, that is this one, represents the intersection of purely analytical talents with the engineering domain. Engineering domain is overarching. We are all engineers. So engineers in domain is the key. So with the engineering domain, there are a group of people who have tremendous analytical skills and we need them. This way we used to represent the engineering science and ability to model complex systems and predict their response to various inputs under various conditions. So boundary, lay, boundary conditions are known. You know how to do these things, right? Uh, this set of engineering has, of course, been the subject of intense development over the last half century and has benefited most directly from the availability of fast digital now i'm going to ask you a question how many of you fall into the category a hands up hands up hands up hands up hands up no one no one i'm not going to come back again to this question think carefully how many of you how many of you fall into category a you have high analytical skills and you are all engineers there's no doubt about it you passed the exam you are engineers so, how many of you fall into category A? No one. I am going to ask this question again. Right? Don't make a mistake. Once again, the so last time I asked you, how many of you fall, you think you fall into that category? A. No one. You are trying to. What the body can have the Are you? You. Why did you say so? Put your hand up. Without any fear, only one guy. Great, great guy. Without these kind of guys, you know, our engineering will be standing still. Halloween engineer. Great guy. Right, category C, sector C. The intersection of our creative capacity with the engineering domain can be viewed as representing those sudden intuitive leaps, often responsible for revolutionary advances in technology without this kind of people there wouldn't have been only analytical tools and no pleasing things to see come on come on come on you got a message you have to obey the message right i'm going to kill that fellow if he doesn't tell me 
వాళ్ళ కంటే ఇవి రత్తం బలాగా బాబా ఇవ్వం కష్టమంటే కానీ వారికి ఎంత పెద్ద హీరో తినాం ఇవి నాకు లెక్చర్ ఇక సో సెక్టర్ సి ద ఇంటర్సెక్షన్ ఆఫ్ ఆర్ క్రియేటివ్ కెపాసిటీ విత్ ద ఎంజిన్ డొమైన్ కెన్ బి వ్యూడ్ యాజ్ రిప్రజెంట్ దోస్ సడన్ ఇంట్యూటివ్ లీప్స్ ఆఫ్న్ రెస్పాన్సిబుల్ ఫర్ రెవల్యూషన్ అడ్వాన్సెస్ ఇన్ టెక్నాలజీ నో యూ గివ్ యూ గాట్ మెసేజ్ యూ హ్యావ్ టు బే ద మెసేజ్ you have to obey the message come on and the nadu agi right into the leaps often responsible for revolution advances in technology called significant novelty so novel things are designed by these people who are in the category c as well as those aspects of any not yet fully supported by engineering science that remain more art than science in fact if you go to japan tokyo there is a river i don't know what river that you that is called when you take a cruise on that river you can see all kinds of bridges they can possibly perceive that's called the museum of bridges all kinds of bridges right so it's beautiful so those bridges should be definitely be, would have been uh, designed by this engineer who are in the category c how many of you fall into the category c monkey you want to get high hand again hi hi think carefully last time i was asking how many fall into the category c that means you have the creativity taking over more than the analytical skills good if without these guys our world will be all boxes and circles perhaps now we have nice buildings coming up here in kalamu sector b the intersection of knowledge and need of both creativity and analytical capability can be used to represent engineering design and much real world problem solving this sector includes activities ranging from developing innovative products and processes to creating an innovative bridge design to develop a new control process for petrochemical production and so on and so forth so how many of you want to get a c uh, b b b good you knew that you get the perhaps best mark no no all three categories are same they are all engineers some of them are good in analytical skills some of them are good in uh, creativity some of them are good in both but you must also find, uh, keep in mind we have a limited brain a limited capacity so when you compromise on analytical skills you lose some when you compromise on the creativity you lose some so the middle sector has compromised on analysis and creativity as well so they can no one can say that they were superior right all the categories that is in the middle pie are same they are all engineers and they are all clever that's why we started you are given a come on gentlemen no you have to learn to obey the instruction two of you please stand up stand up sir you are given an instruction how a small that guy is you are told to do something so you have to learn to obey right if you don't learn to obey once again the punishments can be more severe right then, then there are also other sectors around in this uh, engineering domain Cat, sector 1 2 and 3 right what are the other sectors in the above figure sector 1 the intersection of analytical skills with societal needs only uh societal needs and analytical skills now these are the category of people uh outside the bounds of scientific knowledge might include economics and philosophy economics i would have a question mark certainly philosophy they analyze the needs of society and they have a lot of analytical power so philosophers and uh, many people who surround us they tell us the importance of looking after society and they would have deeply analyzed sociologists perhaps deeply analyzed the societal needs 
Sector three may be artists, Beethoven, uh, maybe uh, Seneca Senanayaka, and the guys who are very good, uh, David Painter, right? These names look familiar to you or just out of the blues, right? Artists and poets. So we need the kind of people in the society. Otherwise, the world will be very boring. And sector two may be used to represent those societal needs outside the bounds of scientific knowledge that require both analytical skills and creative skills, perhaps including, including public policy, business administration, and music. So even business administrators, they should know the needs of society, and now they must have some creativity to market their product and get be a leader in the business world. Right? OK, let's now get back to so engineer can, engineers cannot ignore the above very real issues in the society. We need all these guys to help us out in carrying out projects. Now, as engineers, we are very good in analysis and creativity. Good. So one day, when I was a young engineer, I was doing a lot of work in the mini hydro field. And we were working with NGOs, right? They got money and to put mini hydros all over the place. I was working with CEB and when a lot of areas were not electrified at that time. So we got a message from some NGO in Badul district, come and look at a small community without electricity to so give, give them some power. So we went and we were told to be ready to for a very for a very long walk up the cliff and down the hill. So uh, we are prepared, prepared for that uh, journey. And mind you, this road is anybody from Badul district? Anybody from Badul district? Badul Masala Road, you know very well, right? So when you go on that road, you see precipice on one side and hill on the other side, right? So sometimes these buses go very uh, dangerous in these uh, roads. And we were when we got on that from our vehicle, then somebody, the, the guy who was trekked uh, into this village, showed us the village, and believe me. I would like to go and see this place once again. It's called Pahatgam. Right? When you stand on the road, you look right down below in a precipice and you see a green patch. What are the green patches? What are the green patches in the valley? What are they? Green patches. That's all you see from top. A green patch. Paddy cultivation. And there are about 20 or 25 families at most. And about five of us were there, and there was a sociologist also in our group. We climbed down with the greatest difficulty, right? Gasoli ligana, valvula ligana, galvula ruta gana, gya. Janur, one engineer said, I can't come back. So he stopped halfway through and he went back. That was so difficult to go. So after going all that distance, we found a nice little stream, and we took all the measurements, the head, the flow, and everything. We designed then and there a small hydro scheme for these villagers. But this sociologist was very smart. We got a limited amount of money from the NGO. He casually asked that the, after the, uh, doing all the studies, towards the latter part of the afternoon, he, we had sat for, down for a meeting and he asked, uh, we have very little amount of money. With this money, what you would like us to do? To give you electricity or anything else? What is the answer? What is the answer? What is the answer? They would have given. What is the answer? Huh? They want electricity. Coming from CB guy. Others? Huh? Huh? Yes. When you're going down, we saw very old people carrying half bhakani bags on their shoulders and hatidda tamai aave vi kare diya kare unki vane maharturune apita iti pandanga ni gar inna puluwang apita puluwanna para khadala de actually we had to bend the project so we engineers we are go with preconceived ideas they are very good in analysis we are very good in creativity but still there are out there people who tell us, hey, hey, this is not what you should be doing. Right? So, engineers are creative problem solvers. What is it? 
CB guy. What is it? What is it? A light bulb. In the light bulb, what do you have? What you and I like to ha have in the evening. So, not the ladies, right? And talking of the guys. Come on, come on, you got instructions. Right? So, engineers should be creative problem solvers. That's all what I've been ta talking to you up to now, the last 20 minutes. Right? Okay, now let's get on to more serious stuff. Now, engineering is defined by, first you saw the Wikipedia definition, that there are regulatory authorities that define engineering. ABET, that is the accreditation board for engineers and technology. Engineering and technology. ABET of USA. Very huge organization. Covering the entire America, Northern America. Very powerful organization. Identifies engineering as that profession within Inorakama, that profession to which you and I belong to, in which knowledge of the mathematical natural sciences, mathematical natural sciences gained by study, very important study, experience and practice, study, experience and practice is applied with judgment to develop ways to utilize economically the materials and forces of nature for the benefit of mankind. It looks almost the same as the Wikipedia division, but it has much more than that. Study, knowledge, experience after several years and practice. You have to practice. So that is why we have the professional review examination requires you to have the graduate attributes, you should be a qualified engineer. After, come on, you are given instructions. Mr. Gentleman, you have to learn to obey. If you can't learn to obey, right, no point in becoming a chartered engineer. This is because you came a little late. I am not penalizing you, I am giving you a high seat, right, privileged seats in the front, two front rows. Right, in which knowledge of the mathematical natural science gained by study, knowledge, experience and practice is applied with judgment to develop ways to utilize economically the blah blah blah. So that is why we in the IESL stipulate you must have the graduate qualification, whatever that may be, accepted and recognized by the IESL. That will give you the knowledge to practice as an engineer. Secondly, we want you to have two years of responsible experience. Experience and practice. We give you, uh, we, we check, check you, check whether you have practiced engineering. That's why you are given a period of trial of two years to learn to practice engineering under guidance from senior engineers. This is not coming from the IESL alone. We are part of the world. I am sure you know that we are part of the very prestigious uh, organization called the IPEA, International Professional Engineering Alliance. Right? It has only 17 members. Come on, you may be thinking, what, what, the blood, what is it? 17 members in the whole world. But if you know who the members are, they should be proud that IESL is one of them. UK, in the Council, Abbott in America, uh, Ireland, Canada, Australia, IPENS in New Zealand, Engineers Australia in Australia, uh, South Africa, Malaysia, Singapore, Hong Kong, 10, South Korea, Taiwan, 12, I am losing Turkey, Russia, uh, I would have lost one or two, right? Hong Kong, Sri Lanka, India, 17. So you should be proud that we are there. 
there are so many institutions of engineers trying to get into this group they can't they will not be admitted because they don't have these attributes they don't have these strict guidelines in making engineers professionally qualified so they can't get in so many european institutions are trying they won't they can't so you be very proud that isl is one of them now we go on further we would have you would have heard about the washington accord right isl is the only governing body in sri lanka who can accrue engine degrees here after we got that only in the year 2014 after about 10 years or 12 years of hard work right so the, there are three columns washington accord sydney accord and dublin accord all these three accords represent a category of engineer come on mr gentleman mr hello 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 right so the washington accord right on the top then you come the sydney accord and dublin accord now these three accords are governing the profession of professional engineers in what category called washington accord uh, technicians uh, sorry uh, technician technologies in the second category sydney accord and the dublin accord technicians are in the dublin accord right so all these are now regulated world body and we are part of it and the washington accord list called the washington accord is very important so please take this very very seriously to your head you guys are going to be applying knowledge of mathematics science engineering fundamentals and an engineering specialization as specified in wk 1 to 4 is uh, washington accord knowledge attributes or graduate attributes that means you have got a graduate degree that means you all have got these competencies no questions asked from that point onwards respect to for to solve to solution of complex engineering problem that is the key word complex engineering problems you guys once you become professional engineer you are supposed to solve not simple problem complex engineering problem that's why we are so so we are very very fussy about allowing you to become chartered engineers you should demonstrate that you are able to solve not simple problem but complex engineering problems if you just look at the sydney accord people this fall into the category of 3 year degrees respect to define and applied engineering procedures processes systems and methodologies so they are not required to solve complex engineering problem they are required to apply processes and uh, systems and methodologies just follow them and the technicians are even below respect to why practically practical procedure they are just allowed to follow practical procedures so if you take your own organization you stand up in the engineering category you solve complex engineering problems the second level you allow them to uh, practice routine issues the third category the technicians are merely they are to follow procedures maybe uh, grease in the uh, bearings uh, put in the oil and the kind of thing doing routine maintenance and the medical middle category the middle level technicians are supposed to follow procedures and methodologies the range qualify in several attributes statements use the notion of complex engineering problem that's the engineers the second one the the tech uh, technologies are supposed to solve broadly defined engineering problems so they know what the problem is we go and tell them there's a problem like this you apply this method and go and solve it so you send them to the field with a given set of instructions when it comes to technicians they are supposed to solve well defined engineering problems which means routine maintenance and the and the lot so these short hand level descriptions are uh the key i'm not going to go into detail i would like you to go into the website on the internet profile engineering alliance all these are defined and once again 
we are in this category called W because of what's in the record complexity problems and there are so many depth of knowledge required it has a paragraph on that cannot be resolved without in-depth engineering knowledge so you should have had this at your graduate studies range of conflicting issues requirements involve wide ranging conflicting technical always engineers solve conflicting problems you have problem and you have conflict therefore you solve conflicts right especially in project environments depth of analysis required so analysts are required you can't just uh, uh, think you know just like a basun and say oh, okay make it a kambi hatra kati angal hatra concrete at dan maybe make adia kati that's nonsense that's basun as well you have to analyze and then say yes to get this strength you require so much of 12 mm brass and place like this and if you are very creative maybe you can design there have been a lot of nice designs i i have no time to show you all right there are nice designs that structural engineers can make to suit a particular application so that it will not be obstruct now this doesn't have columns in the middle just imagine the same thing could have done with columns in the middle there been chaos right so so i am not going to go into details so what do we need our engineers to be especially i am not talking the isl what do we what do we need as isl our engineers to be you all are going to be in the high end of the engineering category professional engineer from the, the moment you pass the preliminary exam you are called professional engineers high end nobody is going to come and question your competence thereafter right so therefore what do we expect you all to be speak up and listen this is exactly what you didn't do at the beginning those who came late don't know what happened right you have to speak up gedara gihilla nonata kiyanne pa ayyo ara kada denna tibuna man dunne ne ne dappi tikaka gedara yanne pa If you want to give the fellow tight, give the fellow tight. If you want to commend the fellow, commend the fellow. Give the fellow care. Pani, apar aaja rahi se kya hoon? The vada khilla ke na motor show ki na kiu ne. Don't suffer. Speak up. Tell what you want to say. Straight to the face. What are you afraid of? Nothing to be afraid of. Speak up. But also you have to be listen. You have to learn to listen. Don't when somebody comes with a problem, don't say, "Ah, oh, no, 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 no." That's the worst thing that can happen to a man. People come with problems, and you know what he's going to say. You know how to be what he's going to say. But you have to learn to listen first and appreciate his point of view. He may have a small point that you have missed. So learn to listen and always speak up. Open and always be open and always in a talking mood. Not all the time. but don't rush in the words write well that's why we ask you to write the professional paper review paper b is exactly to check your writing skills right it has to be clear logical in writing clear and logical you guys have got this talents that's why i ask you to pat your own back you are a clever guys to begin with as any you are clever guys so why don't you demonstrate that cleverness with creativity clear thinking logical writing very important in whatever they write fiercely careful about accuracy now once again uh, another small story about uh, when i was doing apagot play there was a there was a seminar and uh, in peradini and a uh, lot of uh, students were there all from all kinds of uh, faculties geology geography uh, uh, arts science and engineering also large number of students and also professors and after the seminar this was even before i started the pakut pale uh, there was a question time and one young boy got up and said so you are all telling lies i was asked to what in the kutpala way i said ha huh? how do you know i live there You live in Colombo. 
I live there in Kotpalai. I know that there's no water in the Kotpalai. I said, how do you know? I know there's no water. Then uh, I, I thought he must have been an art student or something. I just thought, for which faculty are you? He's an engineer faculty. I got, I got a shock. I said, hold on, maybe you are right. You come and see me after the seminar. I didn't want to uh, downgrade that fellow. I said, please come and see me after the seminar. So after the seminar, after five or six fellows come. Unta dinna ke leno hatya. Ma vata karke. Right? I asked Puta, you may be right. You know, I am in Kerala. Yes. Tell me why you think uh, there is no water in the. Uh, sir, Mama, in it, I am living there. I, am, I know that area very well. So how do you make that uh, assumption that uh, there is no water? I know. How do you know? I know. I said, do you know that we have done this calculation of taking 40 years of hydrology? And I said, as a young budding engineer, learn one thing in your life. Be accurate in whatever you do. There's no margin for error in engineering. You know that very well. Right? So when you write something, you have to verify the facts and write. We absolutely spot on accurate. If you don't know, please don't write bullshit. Sorry for using that word. If you don't, it's fine. No one knows everything. We wish a Buddha can have a motive. We lack a lot of knowledge. Even I do lack a lot of knowledge. So I don't talk of things that I don't know. So don't pretend that you know something and then talk and write. If you want to do it, learn properly and then talk and then write. So fiercely careful about the accuracy. Good manners. I, I was not very really good in this manners today in the morning, uh, just as I started because I got a little bit of angry, a little bit angry, right? I uh, got disturbed and I'm disappointed with you all, a little bit. Right? Now no more have overcome that. So you must have good manners. Be courteous. You are not going to lose by being courteous. When I was young, especially when I was driving on the Gaul Road. I used to throw my fist, call him Yaka, Balla, Burua, all kinds of uh, animals in the zoo. I used to call everybody and go and put the car in front of the other fellow and just shout at the fellow. I do all that. As young fellows, we do that. But later on, I found out there's so no point in doing that. No point in doing that. So be courteous and be well mannered. If you are well mannered, others will learn from you to be well mannered and well behaved right namak me hasing vetla nemi eka mamme okkoma kiyanne oma karapu dela thama kiyanne okkoma right i am sure most of you have done these things as well in your life dress well i am going to have a small uh, discussion on the dressing well uh, in the second lecture if time permits right the small one if time permits i am going to talk about that you have to dress well that's why i came in a tie and i saw right I don't want you to come like that because you are students and you know, in a way, you have to come here casually. But if you are going for a particular occasion, dress up to that occasion. I will not look at you and say, come on, you came in the open shirt and the tie and uh, sorry, uh, t-shirt and that kind of I wouldn't say that today. But if you are going for a meeting, be well dressed for that meeting, right? Then only they will, uh, I am not fussy about uh, dresses, but still, then only they will respect you for what you are. I said dress well to suit the occasion. Nah? So don't go like this in a, for a disco party or something. They will think that you are a, you are a nut. And also don't go dressed like a, going for a disco party to a meeting. They will also think that you are nuts. Right? And they will not take you seriously. Read well is something that most of us have forgotten. Read well. Recently, I was speaking to another colleague of mine, uh, not a colleague, which is a uh, of mine, who got a child of about five years, and he said, uh, This fellow is always looking at the TV. I said, Come on, puta. When I had two children, the first thing I did was to train them to read. How do I train them to read? I got their books. I did not tell stories of the head, I read off the stories from a book. Right? I knew the story end to end, but still, if you read with them, they
they learned the habit of reading. And I soon ran out of all my books, the story books. I started reading simple books that I had in my own library, even many major things. One of the books that I read to my elder daughter was about the life of Gandhi. Right? <laughs> well, I love Gandhi so much, I thought I might read it. At least she learned that you have to read. Okay? So, all of us don't read now. Right? So, please learn to read. Even at this age, you have to learn to read. Right? And there is no substitution for reading. Now, there is such a lot of media, news channels, journals, technical reports, and even novels. Read anything. There are a lot of journals coming your way, right? You know, for the just if you drop by, you know, there will be a lot of journals. Uh, Hydropower World and, you know, uh, uh, The Engineer, the, uh, all kinds of journals come your way. The moment you subscribe to uh, uh, any of these uh, institutions, they send you journals. At least, it may not interest you, just read it. Right? For sake of reading. Then you have more things to read from the office. So don't forget to read. Work hard. There's no substitution of working hard. That's what we want you to be. Are you ready for the challenge? Are you? Come on. Yes. I want a loud noise. Are you ready to face the challenge? Yes. Great. Are you ready? Are you ready? Which side you are you? Which side you are in? You are ready? Come on, I like that lady. What is your name? Indrani. Indrani, great lady. She is willing to face the challenge of a sumo. You can't read the small print there. I have written it again. Face the challenge confidently thinking. If I can't, who can? If I can't, nobody can. I can do it. That is the positive thinking that I require of the engineers. If I can't, who can? If I don't, who will? Right? So don't shy away as engineers. If there is a problem to be solved, don't leave it for tomorrow. Don't leave it for someone else to come and solve it. Solve it yourself. Even recently I told one of the young engineers in the ISL, some of the works. He was always complaining. Look, I can't work here. I mean, so much red tape, so much people are saying. Okay, I'll tell you one thing. That whiteboard there. Somebody sent, uh, sent me a, a picture. Someone has, one of you have taken that like this. Uh, one of those white boards, one foot on the stage, another foot on one of those chairs, and the lecturer was writing on that. So someone has taken a picture, put it on the web or someplace, and was circulating, saying, This is how I just said. And everybody was criticizing and laughing. And it came to the council, or the council, we were laughing. I said, why are you laughing? If you have seen that they are, fix it. Still is not fixed. I said, this particular auditorium is, we are supposed to carry out lectures. The person who designed this auditorium forgot to provide code. So whose problem is my problem? I was the president here. So if you are laughing at them, you are laughing at me. Laughing at your own self. So any problem that come your way, if you don't solve it, it is your problem. It is your problem. Please take that serious into your head. There is no one to solve it except you. Maybe that you don't solve it, but yourself, but you have to initiate to solve it. Take action to solve it. Maybe you have to get some more engineers to Round or to go and tell your boss that you know there's something really wrong in the happening in our irrigation scheme. We have to do something about it. Initiate action. Don't just close your eyes and say, yes, let someone inside. That's not my job. No, 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 no. That's your job. If you see a problem, sumo guy, 
you got to fight him and after winning be humble also to say i am an indian if i can who can equally another indian also can solve that problem so you must encourage that fellow also to solve the problem if i can who can so two key words if i can't who can that's very simple very positive thinking if i can after i accomplished who can that you are respect the fellow engineer to solve that problem that you solve now coming to more serious stuff professor we examination uh, you two guys you were told we have to sit right there are two seats somewhere here in the front two rows you come and sit in the front two rows you hear me yeah great i i am happy that you at least uh, responded come for come come in front come in front be my guest the seat somewhere here so, uh, two front two seats front two rows arithmetic bani do ata karan bani the front two rows i am not punishing anyone who come late i know that there are a lot of problems you all have you know you can't get leave from your office or whatever so i won't punish you but this is the way i treat you very well ask you to come and sit in the front rows so all those uh, people in the front two rows are the guys who came out to fight it or fight it so you are you are in a good company don't worry right so we come to the preliminary examination now take this very seriously from this point onwards i gave you um, uh, introduction for the engineering from this point onwards we are focusing on the introduction to be paper take this very very seriously you might think i am talking to uh, i am talking to a class if i am talking to a grade 5 scholars no i am i am telling this with the purpose i'll tell that purpose later on right so take this very very seriously into your head iesl will test the candidates who sit the professional review examination both a paper b paper and the uh, viva on professional experience that's one of those attributes of the professional engineer professional experience a checking on that whether you have got required experience and the knowledge and general issues faced by engineers in the society they work in because i start off by saying you are you have your scientific knowledge and that is to be used for the needs of the society you to understand the society to understand what is the society requiring you to do so that knowing have an idea of what the society is you can be called professional engineers so knowledge on general issues faced by engineers in the society they work in there are two things that we are going to check you on it comprises of three things the viva go say we call it viva for short all of you know the word viva viva is only part of the word viva go say it's a latin word that is uh, actually viva go say says uh, to tell in words that's all it means to tell in words right or to speak up an oral examination and short form we call it viva simply means an interview aimed at assessing one's knowledge right then we have the a paper immediately following the viva we set the a paper based on the replies you give based on the work that you had done based on the design that you have submitted based on the project report that you have submitted we set up two questions and maybe on same day or on another date you will come and answer the a paper one question out of two the b paper is which you are now very uh, keen to sit and pass and a lot of people are told it's very difficult to get pass b paper right b paper is aimed at testing the candidate's knowledge on engineers role in society and general affairs it's a very important examination 
What do we examine at the BPA? I am going to explain to you very well, very clearly. In Engineering Council UK examination, there is a subject called Engineering Society. It's a very general subject. We are tailor-made to suit to Sri Lanka and ISL. We at ISL call it BPA and we test the knowledge of general issues, number one, faced by engineers and society they work in. General issues faced by engineers and, and the society they work in. But here we have a syllabus which, we've, which is very wide and relate to day to day issues we engineers face in society. It's a very wide uh, syllabus. You might think it's too wide, but we make it so wide so that every one of you can pick up the area that you can uh, do it up yourself and answer it properly. But I must tell you what is in the web is a little outdated and uh, I, I, I'll try to revise it as soon as possible but not for you, you all. So don't go by syllabus per se. I, I'm happy that you all are here today in person and be in person for the rest of the lectures even though you come late I'll tell you how to do it. All right? But your syllabus is very wide and relate to day to day issues we engineers face in society. I am going to ask you questions and you are going to respond. How many of you have looked at the B paper syllabus? Put your hands up. I want you to put your hands up. I have looked at the syllabus. No one. No one. One person has looked at. In fact, when I asked it the last time, there were less than five. Very bad. If you have not done it so far, please go and look at the syllabus. I am going to just show it, but don't go by the syllabus per se. At least you must look at it. Second thing, have you gone through some of the lectures done last year? How many of you? Please put your hands up. One, two, is it the web? Either a couple of years of lectures are in the web. All this, what is now this going on live? live telecast, webcast, as in the web, you can open up and listen to the whole thing one over again. That's why I tell you, even if you came late, you have not lost much. You can go back to the web, click on maybe today or tomorrow it will be uh, uploaded. You can listen to me once again. I'm so happy, now I'm boasting, huh? I'm boasting. Last year, there were more than 2,700 strikes of this lecture. Only about 900 people sat, so they would have died twice or thrice. Or maybe others would have also listened to it. Right? So, feel free to go and listen to this lecture once again and check did I miss anything. And especially the ones in the two front rows, that's why I called you to the front. Right? Go and listen to it again and see what you have lost. So even if you get late, I know that some of you can't come on time for due to various reasons and mostly the people in the provinces cannot attend these lectures. So we have made the facility, it's in the web. You can at your own leisure time listen to it. But it's not like listen to you in person. That's so I therefore I'll encourage you to come even if you come late. Uh, others won't penalize you like me. Uh, you can sit anywhere you like, I suppose, and but listen to them in person because you can also ask questions, right? So I am happy that at least two people looked at it. So others, please go and look at the last year's uh, presentations. They are very valuable. They are very valuable. I must tell you. How? Uh, yeah. Have you gone through some of the lectures done last year? Only two of you. Are you aware of the structural B paper? How many of you are the structural BPA? Who's put your hands up? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is not good at all. Here you are going to see the B paper, you apply, and if you are not seeing the structural B paper, it's pretty, 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 pretty bad. So immediately, I'm going to talk about that. Look at some of the past papers, I am sure they are in the web. Look at them and look at the structure of the B paper. 
don't blame the isl for failing you all you have to do your part so go and look at the b paper structure it's very important uh, have you gone through the past papers and attempt to do them anyone no one one two well, look at the past paper right are then alut pachata kuppi darnot beri dadu ganek kawa wala hatra pas denek ode tell one of you see need to come and put a kuppi it's all in order no problem kuppi ak hari da gan right this is the paper structure and emphasis the structure the emphasis it's on communication skills how much you have in your brain how much you have in your heart how much have in your system it's not useful to anyone if you are an engineer remember the basic thing you are doing work for the society if the society doesn't know what you are doing you are useless so you have to communicate what you are doing right so communication skills is very important if you think you are poor in communication skills there's enough enough uh opportunity for you in the isl the toastmasters club is there the speech craft program is there and there so many courses english courses is there for you to improve your communication skills make use of it code of conduct now i do my presidency i printed in a small pocket size like a pocket calendar put it in singhala and tamil only i think this also if you forget you can quickly pick it up take it out and read it again and these days even if you can't get that pocket type thing from the isl last time we make some and available it make it available to you spread you in the code of ethics uh, lecture you have to learn them almost by heart to face the b paper no two words but there are the most important things as range the code of conduct and code of ethics if you miss that you miss everything it's very important i am going to go your lecture on code of ethics so there's a very good lecture coming russell zilla is very competent right don't miss that lecture on code of ethics is very very important code of conduct or code of ethics and awareness of events taking place as well three things communication skills code of ethics and awareness of events taking place in the society i can't emphasize anything more than that the written paper b would be of 3 hours duration it consists of two sections listen to this very carefully section 1 will be on engineering ethics and code of conduct so there are two sections section 1 will be on ethics and code of conduct whilst section 2 will be on topics based on issues taking place in the society both local and foreign so very wide and in other spheres other than engineering that has direct impact on the society i'll tell you what those areas are other spheres other than engineering that has a direct impact on the society understand two sections section 1 code of ethics and uh, code of conduct and you take the code of conduct out of the questions in section 2 roughly about half the questions will be on topics of general nature i'll talk i'll tell you what the general nature topic topics are where specific knowledge about the areas of the area subjected to the question is not necessarily required so even if you are not a specialist in that area it doesn't matter we expect you to answer that question that is one thing we are checking how you analyze a new problem right uh we are spending knowledge about the area uh, subject to the question is not necessarily required to answer them then the candidates are usually the candidates are usually asked to analyze a given topic express opinions so that shows you individuality your ability to analyze your analytical skills and the 
creative skills are going to be checked in these questions. Uh, comment, giving views. It can be a free view. Elaborate, etc. In fact, there was a question that was set by me, and uh, that it was opinion expressed. And you are asked to say whether you agree with the opinion or not. And that opinion, I would say in my own mind, now don't uh, think that I am biased, I would have favored that opinion. That's why I put that opinion. But the highest marks was obtained by the guy, I think it's a girl, I think, who gave a complete contra contradictory uh, opinion to what I have written. So it doesn't matter. That shows that the person read it very well, understood, had a perception of, her, of, of that person's own mind and elaborated, brought forward an excellent argument why that opinion should not be uh, adhered to. It's a complete independent view. And I think that person got the highest mark, about 80 marks for that question. So it doesn't matter. We are going to check your ability to analyze and give your opinion. Right? We use elaborate, etc. On certain issues taking place in the society, a candidate who is generally sensitive to what is taking place in, in and around him, who can form his opinion uh, about them, should be able to answer these questions without difficulty. So I am not being masculine. Uh, him is uh, that's there in all the languages, and him refers to her, and he refers to she, right? I am not being a very uh, 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 masculine in this uh, context, right? I have had to use one word. Other, it looks very messy. So, uh, a candidate who is generally sensitive to what is taking place around him and who can form his opinion about them should be able to answer these questions without difficulty. To be sensitive. The other half of the questions will be based on specific predefined areas of your choice. Maybe to irrigation, maybe to road sector, maybe to power and energy, right? Something that you can be very familiar with. So, you have a choice of answering these questions. I take a general topic or take a topic that you are engaged in. Maybe irrigation, road waste, SLT, uh, power and energy, you name it, you have it. IT, communications, everything is there. Right? Candidates are required to answer four questions. Now keep this very carefully in your mind. Selecting one from section one is compulsory. One from section one is compulsory, and three from section three, two. I have been telling this for the last four years. Even the last exam in, uh, I think, letter part of last year, I found people asking two questions from section one and two questions from section two. I can't tell you anything more than this. As I told you, you might think that I am talking to a group of five-year-olds. I am not. Because after telling all these things, after writing the instructions very clearly on the question paper, if they can't read and understand, I just don't know how to do it. There are one or two candidates who have done two questions from section one and two from two. And there are somebody who have done two from section one and three from section two, maybe they took, it, took a chance. So we delete one question from section one. Section one, one question is compulsory. Please don't answer more than one question in section one. Even if you have time. Put that into your head very seriously. But even last paper we found some people doing two questions from section one. You are surprised. I am surprised. And three questions from section 2. A section 2 has these general topics and the subject specific topics. And you can pick and choose. And then you have very wide, wide selection, about 10 questions. So you have very, very wide selection. Uh, candidates are required to answer 4 and I said that. I put that in red. Each question will carry 25 marks and the pass mark for the entire paper will be 50 marks. I shall be testing you on number one communication skills. The art of communicating clearly, concisely, intelligibly in English. 
not in any other language. The art of structuring an answer, the beginning, the body and the conclusion, presentation and flow, transition from one point to another, proper use of paragraphs, writing grammatically correct English, spellings, writing answers to the point is very essential. I am doing one more lecture in the end, I am going to sort of teach you how to write a proper answer. And I put the writing answers to the point in red. I am sure you have heard of that uh, fellow who wrote about a horse, essay writing. So one day this uh, fellow got a uh, essay, Ashwagana Rachanava Kliyan, right, an essay about the horse. He started by saying, my father had a horse. And the horse was tied to our mango tree in front of our house. And the mango trees are very high, very, very tall. It bore mangoes twice a year. It has a beautiful mango tree. It flowers every uh, year. It has leaves, it has shade. It gives us very good fruits. Wrote everything about the mango tree but the horse. <coughs> My dear friends, I am not joking. My dear friends, I am not joking. Even after so many years of education and practice, I still see this kind of questions. There was a question on conflict uh, management in the last paper. And in that uh, series lecture, the, speak, the, the teacher, the, the lecturer speaks about conducting a meeting. Conduct a meeting, how to write, conduct a meeting. There were at least four or five candidates who were written beautifully about how to conduct a meeting. The question was a conflict resolution. How can I give marks? Can I give marks? If time permits, next time I will bring those answer scripts and show it to you. If you think I am lying, then there was a question on the power and energy. And there was a question, there was a lecture on environment. The power energy question was very specific for power energy and it was related to environment. So these people write about how to get a EIA approval, how to write the EIA report, who writes the EIA report, uh, the entire process of clearing and project uh, for environmental clearance. You don't believe me, I'll show you the answer steps. Try to understand the question first and write to the point. Please, I don't expect this to happen again. Of course, this time it has improved quite a lot. Over the years, it has improved because we have we are carrying out these lectures and we are very, very uh, strict on these things. So it has improved quite a lot. But still, we see a lot of people making a lot of mistakes. Right answers to the point. Ethics and code of conduct. Refer, please refer to ISA publicly on the subject. Is available in the web. We read them, and also there are a lot of articles in the international uh, uh, web uh, uh, websites on code of conduct of engineers. Unfortunately, we have eight codes of conduct. Now, a lot of uh, institutes have gone to four codes of conduct, and it encompasses everything. You write and read and read and read. There are nothing to substitute reading. Issues affecting society, social economic, political factors, gender issues, behavioral sciences, these are topics, national development, industry, commerce, you have wide knowledge, role and responsibility of engineers as a member of the society and as a professional, public perception of engineers, this we ask in questions here, strengths of our engineers, opportunities and threats to the profession, role of the civil society, environmental issues, emerging technologies, international affairs, government's national policy on Sri Lankan and Sri Lankan economy, major infrastructure projects taking place and plan for the future. So these are the coverage of topics from which we will be testing you on. So, pick up few topics that you think you are clever in, study, 
but you must also have good knowledge of the other topics because unfortunately the topic that you picked up may not be the one that we are going to question you on right so generally follow the lectures most of the lecturers set the questions or there's a moderator uh, i am i am the moderator of the whole paper we will be moderating the questions so the all the questions have equal strength right also listen to the lectures on specific topics arranged by the isl like this from time to time and in the series of lectures and last few years on which few questions will be directly based upon so go to the web look at the b paper lectures conducted so far some of the questions may come from them why do students fail in the b paper the real reason they do not work hard and prepare adequately is the key to meet the requirements i am sure you had done crammed and crammed to get through the school examinations o levels a levels a level is the toughest exam in the life uh, for any bi in the world sri lankan a level i guarantee you that right most of you have passed the a level examination all of you may have and the university examinations you have passed but when it comes to isl examinations you fail i can't understand this i can't understand this they do not read <coughs> technical literature they don't read national newspapers you don't read international journals or simply not interested in topics other than their own area of specialization you can be a power engineer you know power engineering very well except anything else environment nothing that's what i feel i am not bothered if you are an irrigation engineer you know nothing about the roads too bad you know nothing about the bridge design some road engineers are there who know nothing about the bridge designs at least you must have some idea right we will be testing you on those things the problems faced by the candidates the candidates the problems faced by the candidates and their weaknesses i have identified them and put them down i keep on repeating this poor reading habits if you read a lot you will overcome most of the issues most of the difficulties are answered the questions so from today on we have for 3 months read 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 and read you have to read no substitution no one can come and read for you lack of knowledge on common affairs especially politics economics social issues some of the answers you see stars when i read them so poor in their knowledge about these things inability to correctly understand the question i am saying that over and over again inability to structure a response to a question i know this time i saw the person has started very well yes even put the mind map my god i thought fantastic uh, i would read a fantastic answer just take so much of time with the wait to put the points down the organizer of the report mind map everything but when i looked at yes only gone through half way has stopped suddenly i don't know why but i think forger gave about 40% because it was there some content right if you think carefully and write it down it's all right the structure of the answer but then adhere to it follow it through to the end don't write half way and just stop it because you have lost, uh, lost your time as i tell you don't do unnecessary things do the right thing you have four questions for three hours roughly about four or five minutes and each of these questions we have checked can be answered well within 30 minutes don't attempt to do extra things do the right thing enough uh in every structure the response to a question in every to write clearly and concisely don't write well what are nobody is really writing well reading well what are not the words and the verb. length of the question that uh, matters of course you need what length to express your views right and for heaven's sake 
I'll show you some pictures next time. Don't write in bullet form. It's not an essay. Bullet form is to take notes. Hyphens are to take notes. One, two, three, four is to take notes. I won't, we won't accept that answers. How good the points may be. Bullet point answers, uh, numbered answers, hyphen answers, we will not consider. You will not get marks. Please don't write like that. Even this time, how much you tell that people write like that. Maybe they, they have never even listened to these lectures. Right? Problems with the English language are the most predominant problems that I see. I'll talk about that later, so I am not going to emphasize on that. To overcome these problems, a series of lectures are conducted about three months before the PR exam, just like this. I sell hopes and praise that this series of lectures and interactions with the eminent resource persons will help candidates to overcome their weaknesses before the examination and enable them to face the paper with greater degree of confidence. I'll tell you one thing. We have selected the panel of lecturers who are pre-eminent. A diplomat who has served maybe 40 years in his career. An economist who is top-notch in the country. So some of these people, you will have to go for seminars and conference to hear them. And they're coming here. So please make it a point to listen to them, absorb them and don't wait like this with me. Ask them questions, probing questions. You will never get an opportunity to beat them again. They are so good. Right? So interact with them. There are a lot to learn from them. IASL will do its part. What do you have to do? Attend these lectures as much as possible. If you miss it, as I said before, look them up in the website like the people in the first two rows please look it up in the website read articles on national interest especially on engineering related issues and issues that impact the national economy international relations environment etc attempt to pass papers attempt the past papers and write answers to those questions and check with the resource persons if they would like to give a feed, uh, give feedback on your answers. So you, when they come, you are, have a chat with them and ask, say if you write some answer that you have sent us, will you be able to correct us and back? Everyone may not agree, I'm not, I can't talk for them, but talking about me, can write any answer to any of those questions. I'll make sure, as it to be by email, I'll make sure the ones that I could uh, correct, I'll correct, I sent you. And the words that I can't, I'll at least give someone to do it and say it to you. Open intention. I am asking for a lot of trouble. I will not do that. I will do that because I want you all to pass. And get the right thing in your head. Uh, attempt past papers. And I will most certainly do so in my subject areas. If you are not quite competent in English, please follow an English course. Now, I don't want to recommend courses. I know ISL is carrying out English course, right? And there's the SLEDA has a very good English course, diploma, right? So please go and enroll. Even now, go and enroll. Maybe it will help you in the next uh, paper uh, in your life, anyway. Why? 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 Why am I emphasize this? Because English is not our mother tongue. I will not ask you to go and study Tamil or Singhala. English you are going to learn. Learn it the proper way. Not from any humbugs. I am going to have another say on English. Right? I will talk about it more. So please, I, I want to end that right at the beginning. Even if there is a crash course, go and enroll, study English. Just like mathematics or science or history or geography or physics or chemistry, you have to learn English because English is not our mother tongue. It is as simple as that. 
I won't ask you to do Sikhilis or Tamil, but English you are going to learn. This I won't go through, it's in the web. Now look, let's look at these awful pictures. And I'm going to ask you the question, who is responsible for those? Who is responsible for these? Who? Cut it by fire. I'm sure due to an electrical shock again. Very common. Who is responsible? Ask that question from your own self. Once again, who is responsible? Sakala Sirimpin Sri Lanka. Of course, you can't blame anybody. This is a very, very old building. Right? I just brought it. Ha <coughs> ha! One of the most uh, uh, people died in a structural failure in Dhaka. 1100 lives lost. The Bangladeshis are very similar to Sri Lanka. Even if you look at the Bangladesh, you can't say this is Sri Lankan or Bangladeshis until they speak. They are the same nature as Sri Lankans. I heard uh, we have descended from Bengal, West Bengal. King Vijay came from there. Right? So we have the same nature. Look at the number of people watching the show. Thousands of people. Thousands of hundred people lost, maybe 5,000 people watched. Right? Now this kind of failures thankfully, fortunately are not so prevalent in our country. Who is responsible? Who is responsible? What does this say? Is in China. Looks funny. There was a joke in one of our newspapers showing this picture. Right? I, I saw it myself. This was shown as a joke in one of our national newspapers. Obviously, it's a joke. The entire truck has come down with the bridge. Isn't it funny? Isn't it funny in China? Right? Our fellows made a joke. Then what happened? Where is this? Where is this? Where is this? Huh? Sorry? Rakhwara. You were there. You have seen that. You have heard about it. So we can't joke at others. Right? They will also laugh at us. Once again, you can see the number of people watching. Now, if why did I show you this? If technologists and technicians try to do the job of engineers, this may happen. So, the whole thing I told you why we are sending you through a very tough examination and a viva is going to be tough and ask the series ask you to do a design it's just to see that we won't repeat this kind of mistakes we can can call it really truly professional engineers you can do a job of uh, work and it will stand the test of time look at our stupas they didn't know all the finite element uh, analysis the only difference between those days engineers and today engineers, I would say, those engineers took 40 years to build a stupa, and now you can take 4 seconds to get a result. That's the only difference. Right? So, uh, but we want you to do uh, well, do the analysis, be creative, and you all protect yourself at the right of the beginning, say, because I said you are clever guys. 
But are we prepared to face the challenge? Can we confidently say that we engineers in Sri Lanka will not let this happen? That's what I want the answer from you. Can ISL assure that our chartered engineers are in a position to avoid this kind of disasters? The answer is in your hands. The answer is in your hands. How about your general knowledge? Shall I take a quiz? What is SIPA? I want answers. What is SIPA? Anyone knows what is SIPA? Put your hands up. Yeah. What is it? Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement. I want to ask you how many of you didn't know. But SIPA has been discussed widely these days. Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement. What is it, NATO? Huh? No action talk only. What is it, NATO? North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Are you from the forces? No. Who are there from forces? I generally have about uh, 10 or 15 from forces. Air Force, Navy, only two guys. Very strange. You should have about 3 or 4 or maybe 5 or 10. North Atlantic Treaty Organization. What is GATT? From this side? GATT? No one have heard about GATT? GATT, GATT. What is a GATT? Huh? Any guess? You don't know to guess? No one has even heard about this? Right? General Agreement on Trade and Tariff. General Agreement on Trade and Tariff. All the world trade is taking on the GATT terms. Right? SAPTA. Yeah? Yeah? What? SAPTA? South Asian Ah huh? What is SAPTA? South Asian Professional Trade Agreement is overarching agreement covering all the SAT countries. SAFTA very close to SAFTA. With preferential, what is it? What is it? Huh? Very simple word, what is it? Free. South Asia Free Trade Agreement. Right? So now I want to show you some very bad story. Right? Look at the bottom line. The number who sits and the number who passed. March 2013, 46%. September 2013, 46%. March 2014, very good jump, 57%. September 2014, 53%. The last examination, 56%. Which side do you like to be? On the winning side or the losing side? I want you to increase this figure to 60s and 70s and it's up to you to perform. I can't do that for you. We are doing everything for you. It's up to you to take the baton and now do the final lap. Okay? How many exams have you faced? But unfortunately these things happen. Can you assure us that this will not happen at this time? I wanted this Sanjeev to bring me an answer script to show you. Ask it, it's like a book, right? Anyone has a book here? Small book? Oh, give me that paper, the half sheet. Assume, assume this is the book, right? You get a book like this, okay? Where do you start answering? Here. No, you are wrong. <laughs> okay. You have, you have answered this kind of answer scripts thousands in your life. 
So the first time I saw somebody started writing here, page number one, page number two. I want to, uh, him to bring that show to show you all if you don't believe me. Page number one, page number two, page number three, and page number four. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? And there were many, many people who have started asking from here that I can, I can sort of excuse. But why do you waste this time to commence the answering this? Even I told Sanjeev to give me the contact of this person, I would really want to ask him why. Maybe he's a left hand. He has a very uh, bad left hand attitude. Maybe. I want to talk to him and find out why he did that. First time in my life I have seen somebody answering like that. So you may be thinking that I am talking uh, nonsense here. I am not talking nonsense. I want to get this right. Right? To write the... <laughs> this looks so funny, right? Anyway, you have no choice. Uh, sorry, can you assure us that this will not happen this time? Anyway, you have no choice because ISL decided not to tolerate this kind of nonsense anymore. One, to write the correct question number. In this time we had one case where the question number was mixed up. Only one case, right? Out of 700 odd. Otherwise it goes to the wrong examiner for marking. Why can't you put the wrong, correct question number? That you answer it. Number two, write the correct index number in all pages. This time for the one for once, I think all the question papers had the index numbers. Last time we had five or four or five. You know what we did? You know what we did? We had to go through so many other records. Where you have a summary sheet in which you say you answer these these questions. So we had first went through those uh, answer sheet, uh, summary sheets. Then he started comparing handwriting to check whose paper is this. Do you want us to put in the trouble? We will not tolerate this anymore. If you don't put your index number, you will not get marks. For sure. This time, fortunately, everybody has written the index number correctly. Last time we had four or five. Some questions. Right? There are cases who don't write the index number at all. Write, write the correct question numbers to which they have answered. There's a summary sheet, so please fill up the summary sheet correctly. Think I have answered only question number 1, uh, 3, 6, 8 and 9. How about it? Right? So in the summary sheet, please fill up the correct uh, numbers. Proper handwriting. It's very difficult for us to sometimes read your handwriting. Very difficult to read. There was instance where the examiner has given zero marks since they could not read the writing. And I don't know, I can't correct you all. Those days when you were small, we, were, we had what we call double rule exercise books. Where each letter we had to write the proper way. A has to be written in a particular way. Now very often, 90% of you now write the English letters any way that you like. That's all right. But when you write any way that you like, when our mind is not set to read those uh, words correctly, we may get a different meaning. D, they always write this. I think 90% of you write D like this. There are someone who wrote T, which always looked like R. I'll show you those uh, those uh, examples next time. I wanted this guy to make copies and give me. How can we read those words? Our, our mind doesn't. I, our mind doesn't read uh, letters. Our minds are tuned to read words. Now, if you don't write correct words the correct way, we may get the wrong meaning and you may not get marks. So who is going to be the loser? You're going to be the loser. So please write correctly in the way that anybody can read. I am not asking to write like you know an artist and write perfect uh, letter. My, my writing is also horribly bad. But 
I write for anybody to understand it. Read the instructions clearly before start writing. Some answers answer five questions. Some answer both questions in section one. I told this to you before. And this is the theme and the coverage. I did the introduction of B paper, that's me. Then we are going to have one lecture on code of ethics. Engineer Russell De Silva, one of the most competent lecturers in this subject. Engineer Society, Prabodh Jinasen from CECB. Science and Environment. Either we might have Professor Sumati Pala or Ramani Allepola. And uh, Government, National Policy and Economy, Dr. Saman Kalagama. And Dr. Gundogan is going to set the paper. International Affairs, Nihal Rodrigo, an ambassador, well, well respected ambassador. We have been ambassador for what, 40 years. And he's going to set the questions. Physical and urban uh, infrastructure, there have been about three or four lectures on that. Our president, uh, Gamage, will do some lectures, Guru Bandar on the road sector and the irrigation sector. And they will also set the questions. Emerging technology, I don't think we are having this lecture this time. Quality issues from the uh, SLSI. Infrastructure on energy, a CB engineer and a petroleum engineer and and the Tag Silva is from the telecom will do the lectures and most probably I will set the questions. Management and behavioral science, uh, I am not, we are not doing this uh, lecture this time uh, because we would like you all to follow the management development for engineers, a CPD course. Because we can't cover this subject in a span of two hours. It has to be a course. So please enroll for the, if you are not enrolled already, we are starting it uh, shortly. Management development for en engineers, one of the most sought after courses in the ISA. We are conducted for the 40th or 42nd time. Right? So some some is we have run two or three courses. It's so popular. So please go and enroll for this course, the CBD course. Management development for engineers. Maybe they are doing it for on Saturdays or Sundays. Let us make sense when you talk and write that once again I am doing that. And like this lecture schedule, today we finished uh, introduction of B paper, uh, December 28th, Code of Ethics, January 1st, National Key Environmental Issues, uh, Ramani Allepola, International Affairs, Nihal Rodriku on the 4th of January, Infrastructure Energy, Samita Bidikas Pay, one engineer from CEB, Infrastructure Civil, Mr. Uh, Gamagi, Sustainable Development and Climate Change for Samatipala. Infrastructure road related, uh, Bandara, government, national policy and economy, Saman Kalagama, engineer uh, society, Prabhupada Jinasena, quality assurance, IT infrastructure, petroleum infrastructure, and my final lecture, uh, mid February. We we'll meet you again in mid February to the summing up and also to tell you uh, some tips on how to uh, write a proper answer. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes. I'll leave that beautiful picture in your mind. So you accept the challenge like a small child. Right? So please keep everything that I told you in your mind. And uh, I wish you all the best. I like that 56% to go up to 65% this time. At least 6 out of 10 from you have to pass the exam. Please. Thank you. Any questions? Any questions? Prasna Hanwat, you are in a hurry to go home, right? Okay. We'll see you sometime in mid February again. <laughs>